So what question do I refuse to answer? What tablet should I get? How good are the drivers and how durable is it? So why won't I answer these? Well, let's take a look at them one at a time. First of all, I do feel a little bit bad when I get a question like this and I say, they're all pretty good actually. The guy who gets that answer is probably like, that was kind of worthless, Brad. And yes, I know it's not the greatest answer in the world, but there are reasons why I answer that way. And the main reason is, is because I can't answer that question for you. Only you can decide which tablet fits you best. And part of the problem here is that everybody has different needs. And so what I want to do with my reviews is I want to figure out what does this tablet do well? What doesn't it do well? Where are the trade-offs? Things like that give you the information so you can make that choice. Occasionally a tablet comes along where I'm just like, that's not quite good enough. There's just better stuff out there and you're better off going in a different direction. But for the most part, most of the stuff I've been reviewing lately is actually pretty good. So looking at two tablets next to each other, it all comes down to what you need and what you like and how you draw. And for a lot of people choosing between say the two that were mentioned in that comment, it's gonna be a toss up. You're gonna enjoy either one you get. There's a lot of factors that come into like a purchasing decision like that. One of the more common ones I get is should I get a Surface Pro or should I get an iPad Pro? That's a really good question. I think if you're looking for a new computer that you can draw on, the Surface Pro might be the way to go. If you already have a nice laptop or a nice computer that you're using, but you want something like a companion device, or if you're already on a Mac and you're used to the ecosystem, you may have an iPhone, then my, maybe the uh, iPad Pro is the way to go. And just replying to a comment, it could be a little bit difficult just to go through all of those pros and cons and, and figure out what the little things that you're looking for specifically that'll help you out. It's what the videos are for. I've also been boosting up my website a little bit, making it a little bit better over time. It's not where I want it to be yet, but it's slowly getting there. I'm, I started it on WordPress for whatever reason I use Media Temple as my host. WordPress was really, really slow. The pages just loaded slow. So slowly I'm moving those over to be static pages. If you're into the kind of geeky website stuff like I am, I'm using Jekyll if you're curious. So as I build out more and more pages, they're getting faster to load and things like that. And as I'm doing that, I'm trying to improve on the information that's there. I'm going back and retouching a lot of those pages. What I want to do with each one is I want to have my review. If I've done a review of that particular tablet on that page, and then I want to list out the features, the core features, the things that you're looking for. And I want to list out some of the competitors. What are some of the other tablets you might not even be aware of that compete with this thing, whether it's on price or specs, that sort of thing. I also want to include things like other people's reviews. So when you get to the bottom of the page, there's other people's like videos or links to their posts, things like that. Other people who have used these so you can get like a second opinion because the way I draw and the way I use something is going to be different than the way somebody else might use it. And I also have larger pages. These are the main ones that have been pointing people to in these videos lately that just list out like, hey, these are the Cintiq replacements. Hey, these are the like all-in-one computer type things. Since I am going in and I am editing these pages and tweaking them and trying to make them better, if there's any information that you would find useful on my website, let me know down in the comments if there's something I'm not providing now or if there's some way that I could organize the information to make it more useful for those of you who are looking for tablets. That would be great information to have because that's ultimately what I want to do. I'm spending a lot of time on it. Might as well make it better. What about the drivers? Why won't you talk about the drivers? So the main thing that I definitely struggle with in all of my videos is getting a tablet, getting it loaded up, getting the drivers working. Part of the reason why is I'm testing, I don't know, 20 tablets a year when, when you're doing that, maybe not that many, 15. I, I don't know how many I test a year. But the moral of the story is, is every couple weeks I get a new one, I load it onto my computer, I have to uninstall the old one, and there's always going to be conflicts. And as time has gone on, it's gotten harder and harder for me to actually install and run these things. I actually use my old laptop, which has, uh, it's an old MacBook Pro. It also has Windows running via Boot Camp, so that way I can just load it up. I keep that as minimal as possible. I don't have a lot of stuff loaded in on there, so I get less driver conflicts. And, and usually when I go to install something, I, I test it out there as well, just, just to make sure there aren't any quirky things happening, make sure the drivers aren't working. So if they're not working on my primary Mac that I use all the time, my old Mac, I keep it clean. I don't have a lot of stuff installed on it. There's less conflicts. Uh, usually things install pretty easily on those. 
So why don't I talk about the drivers in my reviews and the problems I have with drivers when I'm doing my reviews. The main reason why is I feel like I am an outlier. I feel like I am a special case and the problems I have are not necessarily the problems everybody's gonna run into. It is hard to tell if my problems are just mine or if my problems are a larger problem with the product in general. And the last thing I wanna be doing is bashing a good product because I personally had a hard time installing the drivers when no one else might have that problem because they're not me. As long as I can get it running and I can get it working after time, I usually give it a pass and say, okay, drivers are fine. Lastly, how durable are these things? This is also one of those questions that's really hard to answer. Usually what happens, people will ask me like a year after I post a review, so how's this one holding up? Is it still working well for you? And unfortunately, I get something, I try it, I use it for a few weeks and then I set it aside. I'm, I'm not using it again because something else rolls in and I'm trying that. So even if I did pull out something that I had reviewed a year ago, it's been sitting around. It hasn't gone through that constant use that, that you might have if you own it. So again, I'd love to talk about durability, but that's not really something that I can cover in the week or two that I spend with a lot of these devices. The things that I do cover are just the build quality of the devices in general. I don't know if that affects durability in the wrong, long run. I, I would imagine it does. Oftentimes I'll, I'll get these things and I'll plug in the power cord and the power cord will w really wiggle around. And that's kind of a red flag to me. That's like something like if, if things don't plug in tightly like the USB cord or the HDMI cord or something like that, that says that it's a cheap build. And so to me, uh, that's a little bit of a warning because it says, okay, this might not hold up the constant use. If you're plugging this in and out, there's a potential that that might break. There's other tablets that I think perform really well in many, many ways. Uh, the Geomon was one of them. Uh, however, the buttons were really, really wiggly. You know, I call out things like that. I don't know if really wiggly buttons are uh, the, like the express keys, if that's actually going to affect the durability of the product or not, but I figure things like that, those are worth mentioning. So those are the questions, those are the primary questions that I usually never answer in my reviews or in the comment section. For those of you who get annoyed when I don't answer those questions, I'm sorry. It's just one of those things that sometimes it's just hard to, to, to gauge that. There's too many variables at play to really dive into that. So I try to focus on some of the other things that I can control. So that's all I've got for this week. Speaking of reviews, I think I've got something coming in the mail today or tomorrow. I'm very excited about it. Hopefully I'll have enough time to get a video review together uh, for next week, so stay tuned for that. That's all I've got. Thank you guys for uh, supporting this channel and everything. If you have any comments or questions, of course, you can always leave them down below. That's all I've got. I will talk to you guys later.